five viewers. In this video presentation, we are going to discuss about the pterygopalatine ganglion or the sphenopalatine ganglion. Pterygopalatine ganglion is one of the peripherally situated parasympathetic ganglion present in the pterygopalatine fossa. It is the largest ganglion. Before we'll see the ganglion, we will see the boundaries and communications of the pterygopalatine fossa. Over to the bone. Now, the pterygopalatine fossa is this part. This is the pterygopalatine fossa, and it is a pyramidal space present below the apex of the orbit. And it contains three important structures, namely the pterygopalatine ganglion, third part of the maxillary artery, and a segment of the maxillary nerve. Now, let's see the boundaries. The anterior wall, which is colored blue, is the upper medial part of the posterior surface of the body of the maxilla, which is a sloping wall. It slopes downwards and backwards. And the posterior wall is anterior surface of the pterygoid process and the adjoining part of the greater wing of the sphenoid, which is colored red. And the medial wall, which is deep, is formed by the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone upper part and the two processes, the anterior orbital process and the posterior sphenoidal process. They form the medial wall of the pterygopalatine fossa, whereas the roof is formed by the undersurface of the body of the sphenoid bone. Now, let us see the walls in the individual bone. This is the right maxilla and here is the posterior surface, this is the anterior surface of the body of the maxilla, the upper medial part of the posterior surface which is colored blue forms the anterior wall. Here is the sphenoid bone and these, this is the root of the pterygoid process. This is the anterior aspect of the root of the pterygoid process. And here is the, the greater wing of the sphenoid. This little bit of the greater wing forms the posterior wall plus the anterior aspect of the, so which is colored red. And this posterior wall is pierced by three foramina. You can see one foramen over here. This is the foramen rotundum. You can see it is passing through the foramen rotundum. And the other foramen, which is medial, inframedial to that, is the pterygoid canal, the anterior opening of the pterygoid canal. And you can see the probe is coming out through the posterior opening, which is present in the anterior wall of the foramen lacerum. And there is another foramen, which is, you can see only the groove of it. And this is the palatovaginal canal that conveys the pharyngeal branch of the pterygopalatine ganglion, whereas the pterygoid canal transmits the nerve of the pterygoid canal or the median nerve, which carries the parasympathetic fibers as well as the sympathetic fibers to the ganglion. Now, the I'll try to put it in place, not in place, just above and parallel to the sphenoid bone, and you can see the red colored uh, posterior wall. And the roof is formed by the undersurface of the body of the sphenoid bone. And the medial wall is formed by the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone, the upper part of the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone, and these two processes. The anterior process is the orbital process. The posterior process is the sphenoidal process. And between these two processes, you have a notch, sphenopalatine notch, 
which is converted into foramen by the undersurface of the body of the sphenoid bone. And you can see the other process which is here is a pyramidal process. Plates are, this is a horizontal plate of the palatine bone. This is the vertical plate of the palatine bone. Now, I'll put the palatine bone articulating with the maxilla this is how it articulates and this forms the anterior wall and this forms the medial wall on the medial wall you have the sphenopalatine foramen now let's see the communications of the pterygopalatine fossa. Now, the fossa, inferiorly, it communicates with the oral cavity or hard palate through the greater palatine canal, which opens inferiorly at the greater palatine foramen. You can see the foramen over here. I pass the, and behind that, there are lesser palatine foramina are there. And these foramina lead into canals, which open superiorly into the pterygopalatine fossa. And you can see the red probe in the pterygopalatine fossa. I have put the red probe through the greater palatine canal. And you can see the red probe in the pterygopalatine fossa. I'm just pulling and pushing. Are you able to see that red probe in the pterygopalatine fossa through the pterygomaxillary fissure? Right. And the other probe, I have passed through the sphenopalatine foramen. Can you see the green probe in the pterygopalatine fossa? And so the pterygopalatine fossa communicates inferiorly through the greater palatine canal into the oral cavity and through the sphenopalatine foramen into the nasal cavity and anteriorly it communicates with the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. Can you see the probe? Yeah, it has come out into the infratemporal fossa through the pterygomaxillary fissure. So anteriorly, it communicates with the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. And it communicates with the pharynx through the palato-vaginal canal, which I have shown. And and posteriorly with the middle cranial fossa through the foramen rotundum and through the pterygoid canal and then indirectly it communicates through the foramen laceram. And so the communications, I repeat, it communicates inferiorly into the oral cavity through the greater palatine canal, medially through the sphenopalatine foramen into the uh, nasal cavity anteriorly into the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure and posteriorly with the middle cranial fossa through the foramen rotundum as well as the pterygoid canal and with the nasopharynx with the palatovaginal canal. So these are the communications. Now let us see the branches and roots of the pterygopalatine ganglion in the specimen. Over to the specimen. This specimen, we are here. It's a medial approach of the pterygopalatine ganglion by removing the medial wall. That is the upper part of the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone and the sphenoid and the orbital processes. And once it is removed, you can see the pterygopalatine ganglion. This is the pterygopalatine ganglion. And here is the uh, segment of the maxillary nerve. 
and of course this one is the third part of the maxillary artery these are the three main contents of the pterygopalatine fossa i will push this artery away so that it doesn't come in the way and like any other parasympathetic ganglion it receives three roots namely the parasympathetic root sympathetic root and sensory root the sensory roots are derived from the maxillary nerve the ganglion is suspended by two ganglionic branches you can see and this is the ganglion these are the sensory roots coming from the maxillary nerve whereas the parasympathetic root which is an important root carrying preganglionic uh, parasympathetic fibers is derived from the nerve of the pterygoid canal or the vidian's nerve the vidian's nerve is formed by two nerves the superficial or greater petrosal nerve uh, which carries parasympathetic fibers and the sympathetic fibers is derived from the carotid plexus around the internal carotid artery and that nerve is the deep petrosal nerve so the deep petrosal nerve and superficial petrosal nerve join to form the nerve of the pterygoid canal which i have shown in this model now here i have put a big thread to show the internal carotid artery and around the internal carotid artery is the internal the carotid plexus of nerves and this green nerve which is coming through a hiatus over the anterior surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone is the greater or superficial petrosal nerve this is the hiatus this is the nerve which comes out the nerve is a branch of the facial nerve so the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers is arising from the lower part of the pons from the superior salivary and lacrimatory nucleus go via the facial nerve through the greater petrosal nerve and then the nerve runs deep to the trigeminal ganglion and enters the foramen lacerum where it is joined by the deep petrosal nerve that is the sympathetic root derived from the carotid plexus forming the nerve of the pterygoid canal and it enters the pterygoid canal over here and there is a opening here in the anterior wall and the nerve comes out here this green one which i have pulled it is the nerve of the pterygoid canal it will stop here it will not come here it will stop here and the fibers will be relayed in the pterygopalatine ganglion over there from there the postganglionic fibers start that is over this region okay so the roots we have identified sensory root from the maxillary nerve the parasympathetic root from the pterygoid canal and sympathetic root also coming via the pterygoid canal the sympathetic and sens sensory fibers do not relay in the ganglion whereas the parasympathetic fibers are relayed in the ganglion from there the postganglionic fibers start and through the branches of the ganglion it uh, it innervates the uh, palatine gland the pharyngeal glands nasal glands and lacrimal glands in the orbit so now let's see the branches you have four sets of branches from the pterygopalatine ganglion you have a inferior set and these nerves are called palatine nerves and you have three palatine nerves are there the bigger one is a greater palatine nerve there are also tiny nerves are there which are lesser palatine nerves two in number they are named the greater palatine is the anterior palatine nerve middle palatine and posterior palatine the middle and posterior are called lesser palatine the anterior palatine is the greater palatine nerve they pass through the canal and then come out here you can see the nerve can you see the nerve here this is the greater palatine nerve which runs forwards in the palate and then enters the uh, incisive foramen where it communicates with the nasopalatine nerve and 
these nerves which are going behind posteriorly are the lesser palatine nerves which supplies the soft palate and the palatine tonsil. So the palatine glands are innervated, whereas the sensory fiber supplies the mucous membrane, which we have already seen in relation to the maxillary nerve. And apart from that, so then you have the, this, this bunch of nerves is the nasal nerves, nasal set. And these nasal nerves divides into uh, lateral nasal and medial nasal. Lateral nasal to the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Medial nasal is to the nasal septum. And these nerves pass through the sphenopalatine foramen. We have already seen the sphenopalatine foramen on the medial wall, so it comes out through the sphenopalatine, divides into a lateral set and a medial set. One of the medial set is a long nerve and it is known as the nasopalatine nerve, which runs obliquely in the nasal septum and comes over here and enters the incisive foramen to communicate with the greater palatine nerves. And the the other set is the anterior set. The anterior set is the orbital nerves. So orbital nerves here, you can see, which pass through the inferior orbital fissure and to supply the, uh, the periosteum of the orbit, orbital periosteum, and also the posterior ethmoidal air sinus. Then you have a posteriorly running nerve which passes through the palatovaginal canal. That nerve is called the pharyngeal branch, pharyngeal nerve, which supplies the nasopharynx. So I repeat the branches, four sets. You have the palatine set, which run inferiorly, and the nasal branches, which runs medially through the sphenopalatine foramen, and supplies the nasal cavity as well the, the lateral wall of the nasal cavity and medial wall of the nasal cavity. Then you have the posteriorly running one is the pharyngeal branch which passes through the palatovaginal canal to supply the uh, nasopharynx and the anterior orbital branches enters the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure to supply the orbital periosteum and the posterior ethmoidal air sinus. And apart from these four sets, you have another set of nerves, okay, a nerve which comes from the pterygopalatine, the lacrimal, secretomotor fibers to the lacrimal gland. Those fibers pass via the maxillary nerve, then through the branch of the maxillary nerve, that is the Zygomatic nerve, this is the zygomatic nerve. The zygomatic nerve comes out, comes from the maxillary nerve. So this, the postganglionic secretomotor fibers to the lacrimal gland traverse via the zygomatic. Then here in the orbit, the zygomatic nerve divides into its two terminal branches. Here is the zygomatic nerve and you can see the two branches. The upper one is the zygomatic temporal, the lower one is the Zygomaticofacial, so these fibers traverse via the zygomaticotemporal. Then there is a communication between the zygomaticotemporal and the lacrimal nerve. Through that communication and through the terminal part of the lacrimal nerve, it innervates the lacrimal gland. That is a secretomotor pathway for the lacrimal gland. Now we will see the branches of this, this ganglion in a model. Can you see a round yellow structure? Okay, that is a pterygopalatine ganglion. I have just pulled it out from the pterygopalatine fossa and I have pulled it uh, and it is through the pterygomaxillary fissure. It is lying in the pterygomaxillary fissure. Now the branches, the inferiorly, you have inferiorly the palatine nerves, okay? And 
medially is the nasal nerves. Medially is the nasal nerve. And anteriorly is the orbital nerve, orbital nerve. And posteriorly is the pharyngeal branch. The probe is passing through the palatovaginal canal, you can see. And I just push it, okay. And of course, this white probe is the nerve of the pterygoid canal, and the posterior opening of the pterygoid canal is found on the anterior wall of the uh, foram and lacerum, and carrying the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers as well as the sympathetic fibers derived from the deep petrosal nerve, which is a branch coming from the internal carotid plexus. So I have put probe through the foramen rotundum representing the maxillary nerve, this one, the pterygoid nerve, nerve of the pterygoid or the median nerve, this is the pharyngeal branch, here is the, the nasal branch, this is the palatine branch going through the greater palatine foramen, greater palatine canal, etc. So with this model, we complete the pterygopalatine ganglion. Now, this ganglion, when it is irritated or inflamed, it causes congestion of the lacrimal gland and the gland supplied by it in the, the palatine, pharyngeal, and nasal glands, okay, causing the lacrimation and running nose, as you see in the allergic rhinitis. And this condition is called the hay fever. So this ganglion is often referred as the ganglion of hay fever. Thank you very much for listening.